No one would have believed that in the first months of 2022 that Ray Whitby Creations was being watched from across the realms of YouTube. No one could have dreamed of a plan so ridiculous that everyone would laugh, a concept so expensive that no one would be able to afford it, a plan so complicated few others would dare to repeat it. But slowly and surely he drew his project to completion. Q. Jeff Wayne. Welcome, and in this project we're looking at a new type of plywood, which may cause controversy by its definition, but the final effects, I believe, are stunning. So stay tuned and find out what transparent patterned plywood is all about. Join the debate about whether it actually qualifies as being plywood, and see the potential of such an idea in your future projects. Now, I had created some DIY plywood from veneers for a couple of projects, and a viewer of one of these had asked whether I was aware of an individual called Michael Alm here on YouTube, and I was not. But it was very interesting to see his work, and I highly recommend you go and visit his channel, and the link for his channel is in the description below. Seeing his work on pattern plywood, I could understand the potential of developing the next generation, if you will, of plywood, starting from first principles. So I trialled three thicknesses of wood. I used utility wood and thinned it down to 2mm and 3mm strips. I also found some Wenge veneer at 0.74mm, just to make sure that it was all uniform in size of the utility wood, I put them all through a drum sander. Then I had cut the ends off to use smaller strips as spacers. A spacer was glued at each end and then applying loose spacers between the layers just until the base of the system was dried into position on a flat piece of wood. The ends were then sealed with hot glue and then too was the base of the mould. Once the system was dried into place, I then removed all the spacers, and the walls seemed fairly straight, although there's a little bit more deviation on the 2mm walls. But once all was set, I could then pour an epoxy resin, and this actually led to a bit of a mistake. Not only had I forgot to use packing tape on the walls of the mould, I also used a thin pour epoxy resin. But given that this was the first attempt, then it just becomes a bit of a, a concept where we could have the alternating wood and resin layers. So in the final instance, we should have a transparent plywood, at least in two dimensions, of course. I could see that there was a better way of dealing with this process. So instead, I went back, found some veneer, it was 0.74 millimeters in thickness, and then I sealed them prior to using them in the project. These were coated in epoxy resin and then cured whilst under compression on a flat surface. The widgets were 3D printed and had a spacing of 0.74 millimeters and the placing of the strips then was mostly okay, although a few might have been slightly thicker and required a bit of jiggling around in order to get them to fit. But the more the widgets were used, then the less the deviations that the layers would experience. And it was important to check that each layer had gone into the correct spacing rather than its neighbour. And it wasn't so obvious when you've got very thin layers, unless you look very closely. Once the layers were in place, then the widgets could be applied to the top. And this was more of a pain, trying to keep everyone in alignment. But once one was seated in correctly, you could take the next widget, put it in right close to the previous one, and then almost in a comb-like manner pull it out to the place that you need it. To get the outermost strips into the system, I found it best to drop some CA glue onto the ends of the widgets, then position that end strip, and then finally bring in the support from the next wall of the mould. The widgets worked wonders, but of course they must be used right up to the ends of each strip section in order to keep everything in alignment. The bane of any resin pour 
is leaks. And a found sealant yields the fewest headaches for me, but it does require a bit of patience, waiting for it to dry before you can then pour the epoxy resin. All connecting edges and the base of the mould were sealed, and I decided to use clamps at the top, just in case things decided to go wandering. By the way, what do you call a wandering caveman? A Neanderthal. Awful, wasn't it? The positive feeling I had about this new methodology lasted approximately five minutes after I'd poured the resin, as I realised that I'd used the wrong type. It was a shallow rather than deep pour. And it's not always a problem, except the walls of these veneer were very thin and allowed the system to heat up and thicken, which trapped a lot of tiny air bubbles. Now I tried to pour as much of it away as I could and then replace it with deep pour, but some of the bubbles remained and a few layers had collapsed and stuck together because of the viscosity of the shallow pour resin. At least I'd used packing tape for the mould surfaces and I was able to get the transparent plywood uh, out far easier. All three sets were then cut to a particular width and then the patterning could be done. I decided to go for a smaller depth for the 2 and 3 millimeter systems but kept a thicker depth for the veneer. Cutting the segments required a 30 degree angle for the 3 millimeter and veneer system and a 45 degree angle for the 2 millimeter system. Herein I was borrowing some pattern ideas from Michael Alm. So thanks Michael. The 3mm system was to be turned into concentric hexagons, so the piece was cut at 30 degrees and then flipped over again and again. The 2mm system was to have the alpine mountain tops and cut at 45 degrees on the table saw and then a straight cut on the bandsaw. Finally, the veneer system was to have the tumbling blocks pattern and therefore was cut at 30 degrees but without the flipping over. The most important thing that I could give as advice here is to test cut on scrap pieces of wood to make sure that your angles and distances are perfectly aligned before you start cutting up your hard worked ply project. Another recommendation is that you dry fit your pattern first and double check the direction of every piece just to make sure that each segment is in the correct alignment. Then when you're getting on to the final glue up, I was using an epoxy resin. This was a shallow pour that I normally use for glue ups and it has a long working time and it allows you to correct any mistakes that you might spot. It's a bit of a pain if you do spot one right in the centre, but at least you can go back and change it before the system cures. I completed the frame around the pattern and used sealant underneath. This allowed me to add more resin without it leaking over onto the worktop. Also any holes or voids between the pieces would then be filled with resin. It wasn't necessary, I found, to use compression mask curing for this system though it probably is a good idea, certainly if you're accurate with the cutting and then being very precise in your placement of them. Once cured, the pattern plywood can then be removed from the mould and processed. And hopefully you're going to be looking at the fact that the light is transmitted through the ply and not actually looking at the awful alignment of the pattern. Now I think that the 2mm alpine mountain tops look really good. Everything was neat and perhaps this was the easiest pattern to reproduce. Just a note on the contentious issue. Plywood by definition is the layering of wood veneers and are glued together, cross-grained. So okay I didn't cross-grain the wood but it can be done. Now the definition doesn't say what adhesive could be used or how thick it could be applied. I decided I could space out each wooden strip by its thickness and get a uniform alternating sequence of wood and resin, hence being transparent in two dimensions. If you disagree with this definition, then why not write it down in the comments below? <laughs>
The veneer system is much darker than the others because I dyed the resin black so that any gaps between the segments would not allow light to be transmitted, just leaving it to go through the centre of the segments. The tumbling block patterns, I think, look fantastic, especially if you have a coloured light behind it. So this is perhaps not the easiest way of realising the concept, but at least I had achieved it. I know you can repeat some of these patterns using a laser cutter and sheets of hardwood, but from what I understand, there are limitations. With this methodology, the depth of the piece produced is only limited by the pouring depth of the resin. The spacings between the walls can be thin, and I think the sweet spot though is probably around one millimeter. but this may have a lot more to do with my problems experienced through the project rather than the system's capabilities. The advantage of being able to cast thicker depths of material means that you can use these systems for worktops and tables, etc. Finishing the material is straightforward and follows what I've used in previous projects, like the Red Bull Can video, which you can access in the top right of your screen. First is to get those surfaces flat. You can use a planar thicknesser and then a drum sander. And then using an orbital sander, get it dry sanded up to 240 grit. Everything is then sealed, allowed to dry, and then wet sanded to 3000 grit. Of course, it can be monotonous to do this by hand. The final step, you can polish it, wax it, or varnish it. I chose boiled linseed oil and the whole thing just popped out. It really came alive. Obviously, the thinner the veneer and resin and the deeper the segment pieces are, you'll need to be viewing more or less head-on to be able to see through it. And having that angle of incidence can really help for certain applications to bring that pattern right out. With all the pieces finished, it's time to compare the transparent pattern plywood with the ones I had copied from Michael Arm's channel. Of course, if you don't like epoxy resin, then you'll instantly prefer the plywood systems. But hopefully you can see that with the light coming through, the transparent pattern plywood just brings out and enhances the aesthetics of the system. The real impact of using transparent pattern plywood is in the visuals, as you'll see in these sequences. Of course, you can choose whatever colour you want, or have smooth colour transitions, or even if you want to, you could have the lights to flash in sync with music. The possibilities are endless. While I prefer the Alpine Mountain Top system, let me know which systems that you prefer and which patterns. I'm going to try and develop these into a couple of projects over the next few videos, so your feedback and ideas would be very useful. Thank you so much for watching, and if you liked it, please do click the like button. Why not consider subscribing, and maybe even click that bell notification. But please comment below, and I'll catch you next time.